Well, I'm here at ASCO to present a double-blind randomised study which investigated a, a natural plant-based balm uh, to try and act as a local antidote to severe nail toxicity during chemotherapy. There's a, drug, uh, there's a number of drugs to do this, but the, the one most likely is called Taxotere, which is one of the most commonly used chemotherapy drugs at the moment. It's used for breast, prostate and uh, lung cancer and about 50% of patients get uh, quite severe and distressing nail damage uh, where the nails can even come off in extreme cases and you can get secondary infections. Okay. And at what point does the balm start to help that out and what are the benefits that you've seen? The, the background to the study is we set up a scientific committee to try and find therapies which would reduce this damage um, and we there's various things already available like cooling the nail blades but they're not particularly practical so what we did uh, amongst uh, our, our herbalists and, and uh, plant scientists is try to work out why you get nail damage so it's a combination of um, uh, damaging the proliferating cells you get over over inflammation so excess inflammation locally and you get secondary infections so uh, we developed um, you know, over about two or three years of a balm with various natural essential oils, etc., which have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. And then uh, got a UK company to, to develop it for us uh, and set up a randomised trial with 60 patients, 30 at each arm, 30 on placebo, 30 with the intervention. And they used it from the start of chemotherapy until the end and we were quite uh, well very pleased to see when we opened up the blinding that virtually no patient in the active group got any nail damage at all um, so it, it, the hypothesis was it would get absorbed into the nail beds uh, reduce the toxicity from taxotere stop it getting you know damaging the fast growing cells and prevent over inflammation and secondary infection and, and it turned out to be completely correct a significant boon for quality of life then Definitely, because one of the endpoints of the trial was measuring patient nail-related quality of life. In fact, that's the one we felt was most important because it's what you know patients experience, uh, and that was uh, very highly significant. In fact, in the in the polybalm group, we call it the polybalm group. They were, they actually reported an improvement in nail-related quality of life by the end of chemotherapy, on average. Um, so yes, I mean that's one distressing side effect patients now no longer need to worry about. I mean, they're still going to get everything else related to chemo, but that's one we, we're very happy to feel we've contributed uh, in that arena. Yes, well, the uh, hair cooling systems tend to be the one that everyone focuses on with hair loss being immediately visible, but I can imagine the sensation of nail deterioration being equally concerning to patients. So it's good that they have this. And are there any plans to take this forward with further expansion or going towards licensing the item? Yes, I mean, what we do as a trials unit is, is um, try to get the evidence for uh, you know, the wider community patients so they can um, make informed decisions. But at the end of the day, these plant-based products are never going to be licensed. Uh, the reason is, is the FDA and the MHRA uh, aren't really happy with the, the, the amount of different chemicals you have within them. Uh, and even if you were to measure each one and, and, and record it accurately, it, um, there's so much diversity on a sort of month-by-month -month basis, depending on you know the, where the oils were sourced from and, and the weather conditions. So, um, so they will never become prescribable drugs, and uh, so there's no intention for us to sort of try to get a, a license for this. It would be too difficult. Um, so it just goes. It'll be sort of an over-the-counter. Um, remedy for the sake of uh, another word which patients can then access themselves if, if, they, if they want to. But the important thing to remember is in the trial patients used it before they got the nail damage um, and what we're a little bit concerned about and what we had meetings with the ASCO survivorship committee is we need to get the word out there that if you are you know if you decide you want to use something like this you have to use it from the start. Um, and what might happen is patients will start chemotherapy, they'll get nail damage, they'll then Google things and, and, and use it, it might be too late then. Was there any other feedback from the survivorship committee, being as I can imagine they have some very uh, insightful experiences themselves? Uh, yes, I mean I, I, I was contacted by um, Charles 
Lofprinsky, uh, who's, uh, who was head of the survivorship program in ASCO today, and he's very keen to do another collaborative study where we can combine the polybalm cream with, a, um, with nail cooling. Uh, with, a, with a sort of, he's got a quite a uh, specialised system which the nurses can still look at the nail beds and the system which currently is available the nurses don't like because it covers the hands and they can't see the extremities uh, and that's quite exciting. Um, saying that, you know, we, we hardly got any toxicity in, in the polybalm group but there was still some so if we can eliminate it completely that would be that'd be great and, and they have enormous resources in, in the state so if, if, if we can do the next trial with them it would be, it'd be great for our trials unit and you know, great for uh, research in this area which is sort of growing I think.